wait a couple more minutes, see if anybody else wants to join. I wanted to show you guys our new friend. Hopefully your children have told you about him. Say hi. Hi, Biscuit. Having some dinner. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. I was telling like, so the online kids, I feel like it's Dora the Explorer. Sometimes I just talk and then I'm like, just wait and there's nothing and I'm like, okay, well, hopefully you got that. <laughs> See that? Yes, he does go by Flash. That's what some of the kids have named him. Because <laughs> he's really quick and he's got red eyes. Come here. Go show him your eyes. Come here, buddy. It's okay. I know you're eating your dinner. It's okay. Come on, buddy. Go show him your red eyes. Huh? Huh, baby? He's so friendly. We put him in this little cage of doom and take him around school with us when we go to specials and lunch. Have a grand time. <laughs> oh. Right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Hopefully, we can get through this kind of quick and easy since we're, you know, like a quarter of the way through the school year. Most of the stuff I'm sure you're aware of. But we are going to start with a quick little uh, message from Mr. Crawford. He made a little video for you guys. So we'll go ahead and play that. If you can't hear it, let me know. Good evening, this is Principal Crawford. Thank you for joining our virtual open house. In a few minutes, our teachers will share what your students have been learning and what you, the parent, can expect during the next grading period and beyond. But before I go, I want to thank you for giving us an opportunity to be a part of your child's education. Our vision is to provide a collaborative and equitable learning environment to ensure 100% student success. Our mission, is to provide a caring environment where families, students, and staff learn together to ensure all students are prepared for college, career, and life. It's in our resolve to provide a safe and quality education for our students. Teachers, parents, and students had to adopt new ways of work. It has not been easy, but we have shown unwavering commitment to our mission. Recently, we completed our interim assessment to gauge our current student proficiency levels and develop a plan for success. Overall, our students perform approximately 10 points higher than the district average. Your child's teacher can provide your student's individual data sheet. The data sheet will provide a summary of your student's strengths and the areas for improvement. Not only are our students learning, but thanks to the collective efforts of our entire Stingray family, we are limiting the spread of COVID-19 in our school. As of today, none of our students have been reported having tested positive for the virus. None of this would be possible without you, the parent, the teachers, and the staff. Well, that's it for me. Enjoy your teacher presentations. And again, thank you for joining our virtual open house and supporting our school. Thanks, Mr. Crawford. Okay. Maybe just a little. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to go through. I made a little PowerPoint uh, here that we're just going to go through. Uh, if you guys have any questions as we go through this, feel free to add any comments or anything to the chat. And then uh, at the end, there's a section where we can ask questions and I'll answer anything that was in the chat. Okay? Um, my, for my friends that won't be, can't make it or come in late or anything, I am recording it and I'll send it out in an email. So you awesome parents don't have to worry about that email. You can just delete it. It's my favorite thing to do to emails. <laughs> so.
So welcome to our first annual virtual open house. Uh, like I said before, a lot of this information is kind of repetitive because we are about 25% of the way through the school year, but that's okay. I like to talk. That's why I'm a teacher. <laughs> In case you don't have my email address for whatever reason, it is right there for you. That is the best way to contact me. I have it connected to my phone. I have it connected to everything. So I'm able to answer things really quickly. Uh, and we also have a class remind that I send things through and that you're also able to text me through uh, quickly as well. And I try and get to that as much as possible. Sometimes it doesn't, the notification doesn't show up and it's like, oh, that was like yesterday, sorry. <laughs> So in our classroom, we are very fortunate that we have uh, quite a few people in here. One of them is myself. I know, I know, you're lucky. This is my 10th year teaching at Sunset Hills. Uh, the first five years of my time here, I spent as a special education teacher, teaching children with varying exceptionalities um, here in the school, K through five. And then the last five years, this is my fifth year teaching fifth grade. And I love it. I love their sarcasm. I like that they, they get my humor and I can kind of mess with them a little bit and throw little jabs here and there at them. I think that's that's really fun. <laughs> so I really enjoy uh, the, the challenge of fifth grade. Some of my favorite things I really enjoy just being outside and going to different places and exploring new things. And I really love incorporating those into my classroom. So when we talk about the rock cycle and things like that, I have rocks that I've collected from all over the earth. I have sand from a black beach in Iceland. You know, I have pictures from the Grand Canyon that I bring in and show the kids and let them experience what our beautiful earth has to offer all of us. Uh, I really dig animals. If I had my way, I would have all of the animals in the world and have all the children in the world. <laughs> Hence the guinea pig. I've been wanting one for years. I've been wanting a class pet. And I just felt like this was just like the year to get it. You know, fifth grade's really a monumentous year in elementary school. And I feel like with all of the constraints that we have been put on us, whether in the classroom or at home, we needed something special and we needed something to be celebrated and enjoyed and look forward to. And I really love it when the kids just, they light up no matter how bad of a day they're having or what they're struggling with. Basically, it just makes everything better. And soon we'll be getting another one. I just uh, was awarded a grant uh, a couple days ago. So we'll be getting another friend for Biscuit. Uh, I haven't quite decided on a name yet. It might be Gravy or it might be Pimento Cheese. We're kind of, it depends what color he is. He has to tell me his name, right Biscuit? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we are also super lucky that we have uh, another friend in here with us. Her name is Mrs. Godrell. And she is our uh, Varying Exceptionalities teacher currently at this school. And she works with quite a few of our friends in class and she's always in here with us helping explore learning and expounding on our learning and she's actually right here. So I'm going to turn the little camera and she can give her a little spiel. Hi friends, I'm Miss Godrow. I am 11 coming into fifth grade. Um, as Miss Bone described, I am coming in here for both reading and math support. Um, I'm in here. I don't know so many times I lose track, I, but it's like <laughs> it seems like five days a week. A um, little bit about me. I am, this is year 33, so I've been doing this for a while and I still absolutely love this job. So teaching, if you love what you're doing, it's not like not going to work. It's true. Um, and I love being with kids. I love seeing them light up and I really love teaching uh, reading and math strategies. So I'm having the best time being here at Sunset Hills. I have taught middle school. I did it for six years, so I definitely know what we've got to do to get them ready to go um, to sixth grade, um, which will seem like it'll go faster than ever. But I wanted to say hi. Um, I'm loving being at Sunset Hills. This is my first year here, but it's definitely not my first year teaching. So <laughs> thanks for clocking in and checking in with us, and we look forward to getting your kids ready for middle school um, the end of this year. Thanks. Absolutely. Have a great night. Thanks, Ms. Barbara. Yep. Fortunate. In addition to myself and Miss Godrow, we have a final intern uh, from SPC, from St. Petersburg College, and she's in her final internship. And she's actually at this point has taken over about 90% of the classroom responsibilities. 
She is teaching the math, she's teaching the reading, she's teaching science, all of it uh, in conjunction with me. I'm in the room, I pull small groups to work on, you know, things that people are struggling with, that students are struggling with, but she's doing the bulk of the teaching and she's doing a phenomenal job. Um, it's, it's really nice and it's a breath of fresh air. I love having interns in my room because they just br bring in such like optimism and hope because they're fresh and, you know, and new and they have all these new strategies and new ways of thinking about things. And it's really, it's great for me as a teacher because it helps me to grow. Uh, and then we kind of just work together and build that relationship. And then it's just more help for all of the kids. You know, the ratio is down with the kids so that, you know, Ms. Minton can work with the online kids and I can work more in depth with the kids in uh, in the classroom and vice versa. Like we're really able to hit children academically on multiple levels all the time. And it's it's always great for kids. The more help, the more support we can get, the better. So she's quite a lovely young lady that we've had in here and she'll be uh, in our class up through winter break. So after winter break, you're stuck with me. <laughs> But yes, so I'm sure, especially my digital friends uh, or my robot friends have definitely heard her name mentioned for sure. She's she's killing it for sure. Just wanted to give you guys a little, little insight on my life. This is my beautiful family. Uh, it's my daughter, Lucy. She's about a year and a half old. She's spitfire like her mama. <laughs> I'm really uh, enjoying every minute with her. Uh, you know, we're always outside, we're always in the water doing all those wonderful things. And knock on wood, hopefully we'll get to start traveling some more because that's, that's, you know, what I love to do. And with all the constraints, it hasn't been something that I've wanted to bring my child around for safety precautions, of course. But knock on wood, we're going to start being able to open all those doors up for her. But she's a, an awesome little girl. It's my husband, uh, Mike. And some of her aunties and uncles pictured in there. And then the picture of the field, that's the farm where I grew up in, in uh, upstate Pennsylvania. My family is still there. We have several hundred acres up there and lots of cows and pigs and goats. And it's just my heart. My heart is, is in the country for sure. I love it up there. I love it all. I just love the space and the smell. Like it just smells like home. My husband says it smells like not so good stuff and that's okay <laughs> but that's me in a nutshell and my family so here is our classroom these are i call them my humanoid children these are the ones that sit in the class with me every day and get to see me and all that fun stuff and i get to, to interact with them on a daily basis face to face but as you can see there is plenty of room when my other children are ready to come back to class and that's what i'm really looking forward to is when you guys are ready there's definitely room in here to where you'll be able to come back and hang out and we'll be able to to get along and and know how everything's going to go that's really fun and i love getting to know every single one of you guys it's been really a great experience and i'm just i'm glad to be back in school because that last semester that last quarter at the end of last year was was challenging and difficult for sure. Then I have my robot children. So I have humanoids and I have robots. <laughs> because all we ever see is just this little square head <laughs> on there and it just makes me laugh all the time. And I laugh because, you know, a lot of times it is, it's like talking to Dora the Explorer. I go, okay, blah, blah, blah. And then it's silent. And then I go, Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> Just like Dora. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not sure if they hear us, but it's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> well, I really have enjoyed the challenge of being able to, you know, integrate all the technology and stuff and be able to incorporate all the digital lessons. That's a passion of mine is keeping our earth beautiful and keeping our earth green. So being able to incorporate everything technologically cutting down all the paper that we use in class is just fantastic for me. Not to mention, I can don't have to take anything home but my computer to grade stuff or to plan or to upload anything. I never have to worry about not having enough copies for everybody. I just simply upload it to the computer and bam, it's right there. And I love it. I absolutely love it. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty. 
attendance. So for our humanoid children, attendance is taken at 845. After that, you are marked late. Um, and then for my robot friends, we don't do a morning meeting because you guys go straight to specials. So if you are not in our morning meeting by around 930, 935, you are considered late, okay? It is super important. Fifth grade is a huge monumental year. And those of you who have older children who have gone through middle school know how important fifth grade is to prepare your child for sixth grade and beyond. Middle school is a whole different beast. So we have to cram pack as much as humanly possible into fifth grade as we possibly can in order to prepare them for middle school so that they are able to be as successful as possible. Every minute truly counts. So when friends show up late for re any reason, it kind of just puts a little dent in our day and it kind of just doesn't help with the flow very well. So it's really important and it's important for that practice to continue for middle school as well because they have seven classes where they have to be on time and they have to have so much time for transition uh, and things like that. So it's really important to start building that habit now so that when they get to middle school, it's just a piece of cake. Uh, just as always, you can always report absences. Hi, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> you can report absences on the school website. Just go to Sunset Hills um, at my PS PCSB, and there is a tab where you can report your absence right there. Again, tech, you know, all digital, so we don't you don't have to write notes in anymore. You don't have to do any of that. Just submit it right there online, and it's done, taken care of, and our lovely. Uh, office friends take care of the coding and stuff for changing the absence to excused or not excused, depending on the absence. Hey, buddy. So our class schedule for my robot friends. I have separated our day into two meetings. We have a morning meeting and during that morning meeting, we do a lot of math and science and we do our uh, literacy intervention rotations where we're constantly going. Um, there's a lot going on in that time and I have set up in there different transition points in order for robot children to take breaks, whether it's a mental break, or just move away from the computer or go to the bathroom, get a drink of water, any of those types of things. Just like I said before, if you're away from your computer during instructional times, it, it puts a pivot in our day. You know, if I'm giving instructions or explaining something or teaching something and you leave, for, the, the child leaves for five, seven minutes, however long, and then comes back and goes, oh, I have no idea what you were even talking about. And then I have to go back and re-teach that to that particular child. It just kind of makes it more difficult for everybody involved. I do uh, ask that robot children have their computer screens on all the time, their cameras on. It just helps me to be able to help them refocus. If I can't see their face, I can't tell if they're focused and on task. So by having their computer screen on and I can see that they're, you know, they're playing with their something on their desk or they're spinning around in their chair or whatever, I'm able to quickly just send a little chat note or mention like, Hey buddy, maybe we need to stay on task. Are you confused? You need to know, you know, what to do next, anything like that. I can't do that if I can't see them. So that's that's crucial is to have those cameras on. And then the other thing on that slide is uh, for my robot children, the chat feature on Teams, please make sure that is for questions that you have, uh, concerns that you have. And if a lot of times um, Ms. Minton or myself will ask a question and ask you to respond in the chat, but that's the only thing that the chat is for. And parents, if you guys can reiterate that to your children, just to make sure that, you know, there's no random comments, no gifts being passed back and forth. Like this isn't a chat feature. This isn't their private chat. Everything they put in that chat, I see everybody in the, the meeting sees, and then it gets saved from day to day, week to week, as we continue with our digital learning, okay? I love talking. All right, next slide, super simple. It is our flow of the day. So this is the part where I usually tell my parents, you know, 
I understand that dentist appointments happen. I understand doctor's appointments happen. If you're scheduling those things and you don't want your child to miss a chunk of their day, we have specials first thing in the morning, so we don't start instruction until about uh, 9.25, 9.30. We start our math instruction. So if it is at all possible to plan your doctor's and dentist appointments earlier in the morning so that they're not missing core instruction, that would really be, to me, most preferred if it's possible. I understand it's not a perfect solution for everyone. I, I understand that completely, um, but that would be, if I had to choose, that would be the place to take that time out of, personally, okay? And we do have music and art. We have brand new music and art teachers this year who have been doing a phenomenal job uh, in class. They seem, the kids seem, seem to really enjoy it and they're coming with home with some, some great projects I've seen. Even the online art looks like so fun. Like I'm really, really jealous and I'm really happy for them because that was definitely uh enjoyable for sure to see and then you know we still got our coaches coach testone still down there kicking booty and being awesome and making the kids laugh and he is way different this year but they're still having a great time out there they're still coming back laughing and enjoying themselves and sweating and that's what pe is all about definitely okay health and safety protocols so I'm sure you guys know all this. I just felt like it was a cool thing to put in there and I found some really cool bitmojis that made me laugh. <laughs> when it comes down to it, that's probably the real reason. Uh, but our desks are six feet apart. At least we do have big double desks in my room. So the kids have a nice big workstation rather than the itty bitty desks that they might be used to, which I really enjoy. Um, but there's only one child at each double desk and they are spaced greatly apart. You know, um, they are sanitizing their hands constantly. Most of the kids in here have their own hand sanitizers at their desk that they brought. I also have my own that I keep. Every time we line up, we make sure our hands are sanitized. Every time we come back in the class, our hands are washed or sanitized. We sanitize our hands before we even walk in the bathroom because we're touching that grimy handle and God knows what's on there. <laughs> So we sanitize our hands before we even touch the handle and then when they come out they've all been taught at the beginning of the school year how to wash their hands um, correctly and for the correct amount of time so they're doing that as well bathrooms are always fully stocked with soap and paper towels um, and hand sanitizer is back there as well like we're really you know we're really working hard on keeping us clean and healthy because that's how we're going to get the best education possible and then of course our masks our masks are on all of the time at our desk. Occasionally they will get mask breaks as needed. It's not like a prescribed at 1015, you take your mask off. It's more like, all right, you guys just came back from PE. You've been sweating and breathing really hard. So once they get back to their desks, I let them take their mask off for about five, 10 minutes just to relax and cool off. And then I'm like, all right guys, let's put them back on. The only time me as a teacher or Miss Minton have their mask off off is when I'm at my desk because I'll show you on my camera. I have like um, a plexiglass divider here so that any spit particles or anything, I'm already about six, seven, eight feet away from the kids, but there is a shield in front of me behind my computer so that that way I'm able to communicate more better with my robot children because sometimes if you're a horrible, horrible, horrible mask, so that way um, we're all protected, whether we're on the computer or in front of me. That's the only reason I have a mask off is because I have this giant three foot by two foot shield in front of me that's sitting there. Okay. Uh, next slide is expectations. I kind of already went over this. It was in my Adobe Spark at the beginning of the year that I sent out. Um, you know, your kids are in fifth grade expectations at this point are pretty duh, right? Microphones need to be muted for digital friends. Um, if you have questions, uh, there's a hand raising feature or, you, you know, a lot of kids just raise their hand randomly. Hi, baby. Hi. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's, we're getting to that comfort level point in the school year with our robot children, where I think some of them are forgetting that they're at home and that there's, 
you know, 18 other kids around them that they can't see, and they forget that. And they're just like, oh, Miss Vaughn, I want to tell you something. And it's like, no, 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 dude. No, no, no. Doesn't work that way. Simmer down. Take a breath. Go through the right channels. Okay? And Miss Minton, Miss Minton is so nice and sweet and kind. She's just like, oh, okay. And I'm like, uh-uh. You got to put a, put a snap on that. <laughs> no way. <laughs> because if they were in the classroom, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't just randomly yell out. They know better than that. But it's hard when you're at home and you can't see or hear or feel all of those presences around you. So I totally get that. So sometimes it's like, oh, try it again. Not the right time. Put it in the chat, those types of things that my robot parents might hear. Uh, yeah, that's about it on that side. Same thing in the classroom. They're duh rules. Listen, follow directions. Be a good person. If you're a good person. It's, it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? Just don't hurt people. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt me. Do your job. It's pretty simple. We're in fifth grade, which is why I love fifth grade, because I don't have to do the whole song and dance about how to be a good person. They know. They're good people. Uh, you guys do know that I do a behavior uh, citizenship vlog. And what that is, is I have a clipboard. And I keep track on the clipboard with everybody's name on it each day of the week. And if we have any infractions, you know, if we're having trouble following directions, listening, acting inappropriate at specials, using malicious language, anything like that, I'll just mark it on their citizenship log. And then at the end of the week, I'll contact the parent or if it's if it's a real rough day, I might contact you that day. Um, I was doing it every week for the first couple of weeks, but these kids are really good, like really good. <laughs> so I stopped sending the emails because I didn't want to clutter up your email box. I don't know about you guys, but I get like 800 emails a day. So I just changed it to if there's a problem, if your child has less than an A average on their um, citizenship log, then I'll email you. But otherwise, no news is good news. <laughs> That's kind of the, the motto that I go by because, yeah, you know, your kids are awesome. Like you you got to know that. So just, just, yeah, they're pretty awesome. They're pretty awesome. I mean, granted, they have a mask over their faces, and even when they do talk, I don't understand them. So <laughs> that could be part of it. <laughs> they have the mask on, and they're like, hey, I'm, back I'm like, I have no clue what you say. And they say it again, and I'm like, uh, no. I still don't know, and I just keep doing what I'm doing. <laughs> it's fine. I tell them to write it in the chat in the classroom, and they don't get it. They haven't quite picked up on my humor yet. It's fine. So one of my favorite things, skipping over to something else, that I enjoy doing is um, group work and projects. And thanks to all the craziness going on, I can't really do that. You know, it's not allowed and I'm being I'm trying to be really respectful that me as a person that's just who I am like I love projects I love art I love you know hands-on learning because I feel like that's how I learn best that's how children in general work best like you can sit there and you can rant at me for 900 years and I have no clue what you said but if I'm able to do a project I get it so it clicks with me so because we haven't been able to do that, I've been trying to incorporate individual projects in class or digital projects. So here I have some pictures of some of the cloud projects that our face-to-face -face students made. And my robot children made the same ones at home, but obviously I don't have those. And they're covering our walls in the classroom. Um, and you can see another picture, a really good picture there of, of Mr. P Biscuit. We made uh, one complete digital book on the solar system earlier this year, and we're in the middle of working on one right now about uh, earth science, water cycle, weather, climate, all that fun stuff. So your children are more than welcome on Clever to share that with you and show you those things, but I'm trying the best I can to incorporate some hands-on activities. You know, yesterday we did a really fun volume activity where we went all around. There's a classroom next to me that's empty. There's no students in there. 
So we went in there. So between like the 11 kids that I have in here, we somewhere in here, somewhere in the empty room and somewhere back in my office. And we were finding different rectangular prisms and they had tape measures and stuff. And we're finding the volume of all these different crazy things. Like we found the volume of Biscuit's cage, sorry, apartment. He doesn't like the word cage and our desk and the door and all these different things that the kids found. But we were able, because we have so few students in here, we were able to spread out. And because I don't follow directions and I go into rooms that they tell me not to, <laughs> uh, we were able to spread out and do that. And I think the online children, the robot children really enjoyed that too. You know, I heard a lot of like, I found the volume of my TV and I found the volume of our refrigerator. And just being able to explore math in that way and see that it is a, a real world experience and a real world skill that you need to know was really cool to watch the kids experience and see that they could understand it like they actually got it because they applied it in the real world and that's important. So hopefully we'll be able to continue and find some creative solutions to some group work and projects activities for sure. Okay, homework. So you guys have probably noticed, I don't have a lot of homework. I don't believe in a lot of homework. These children are children, and I think a lot of times we forget that, that they're just little babies. <laughs> and we have so many expectations for their little selves. I want them to be able to, yes, they need to practice, but they also need to be children. So they, I would love to see more than anything them to you know, be able to join sports or hang out with their friends or hang out with their family. And I know I have friends who have middle school and high school children who, you know, we go to the pumpkin patch and he's like, oh, Austin had to stay home because he had too much homework. And that hurts my heart. Like, you're not able to enjoy a family activity because you have so much homework. This is your last year of freedom for some of you, for some of your children when it comes to homework. Let them enjoy their childhood and just have a little bit of homework. Again, it's digital. A lot of times it's through Kahoot, 10, 15 questions, doesn't take a whole lot of time. One thing that I really like about doing a digital homework is that if they're struggling with that assignment, if we're you know, dividing and they just cannot figure out how to divide, with Kahoot, with any digital homework that I give, they can go back and they can redo that Kahoot a million times until they're able to practice that skill to the point that they're able to master it. All they have to do put is go, go back into the Kahoot and they just have to change their name slightly. So, you know, instead of putting Rachel Bone, I might put Rachel Bone with an exclamation mark or I might just put Rachel B. Something like that. And because if you put the exact same name, it's going to register it as the same person and it won't let you. But if you change your name slightly, it'll let you do it a million times every single time. And I think that's really awesome. And I know a lot of our friends do that, you know, and I'll see it on my side. It'll show like 60% and then 80% and then 100%. And I think that's so awesome. The goal of homework isn't like a gotcha. It's not a ha ha, you're a horrible mathematician. It's to practice those skills and to build those skills up. So by redoing those few problems, you're helping to reinforce that for your child and they're able to be more successful. Now, I know I have some parents in here who maybe their child struggles. Maybe their child's an overachiever. We all have them. We all know who they are. <laughs> so we will be starting extra credit starting next grading period. So starting the week of the 26th starts is the first week of our second grading period. We'll be doing um, weekly extra credit and I'll show you right here and I'll send more information about this home home closer to the time or an email but it is based on an activity per day so on Monday it's gonna be Khan Academy working on math skills again online digitally they spend 30 minutes on Khan Academy bust and booty to you know increase their math skills and increase their math understanding they can earn extra credit for math Tuesday is learning farm there's going to be an assignment specifically in there that says extra credit. Oh yeah, he's talking. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. It's going to say extra credit assignment, and they just have to do one assignment and reach either a gold or a silver medal, which is as little as ten questions. 
Okay, with as little as 10 questions, you can, they can earn uh, a silver or gold medal in that uh, category. So that's gonna be uh, science. And then Wednesday is read work. So you have to just do one reading passage with comprehension questions to earn extra credit for Wednesday. Thursday is dream box, working on math skills again. And then Friday, read at home for 30 minutes. I'd love to hear that, you know, your child's reading with you or you're reading with them or even you're reading to them. But I understand you guys, we all have busy schedules. And I, I can truly say I didn't truly understand how busy parents were until I became one, honestly. So like, I was like, I'm gonna be that parent that reads to my kid every night because that's what good parents do because I went to teacher school and they told me to read to kids every night. And now I'm like, oh, I didn't do that again. Sorry. <laughs> so I totally get it. And that's why it's extra credit. Okay, that's why we don't have reading logs, things like that. If you guys get to it, awesome. It's only gonna help your child. If you don't get it to it, it's not gonna hurt them. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. But that's our extra credit. I just thought it would be a different way to, to hit everything and kind of be a little fun and interesting. Build that background knowledge in math and or reading and science, all that fun stuff. Questions. Let's see if there's anything in our comments. Yes, Miss Crystal. Um, I have a quick question on the homework stuff that they're doing, because like, you know, I texted you before that, you know, as we're getting older, I don't know if other parents are having this, but I've forgotten a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, see? <laughs> And um, so um, like the other night I was helping her with something and I completely forgot what the question was. But anyways, and I'm like, uh, I don't know, just, you know, do the best you can and then ask your teacher. So are you going over the homework with them on things that they've missed or or how is that working? I'm just curious also because I would just like to know how stupid I am now. <laughs> <laughs> So the nice thing is with digital is that it actually gives me an average on Kahoot on my side of, you know, out of everybody that took the quiz, number one, only 20% got it right. That type of thing for every individual question. So what we try and do, barring time, is any question that has 50% accuracy or lower, we go over. I don't like to waste time. So, you know, if we're at 80 or 100% accuracy, there's no real reason to go over that question. You know what I mean? No, I, I I agree. I mean, in in most of them, like the basic math stuff and everything else, I'm I'm pretty sure you know. And one of Aiden's best friends is Bella. I'm friends with his mom. Uh -huh. They live down the street, and um, you know, I, I know she probably you know doesn't have any problems with those ones and stuff like that. But it's like, you know, especially now with this area and surface stuff and things like that, that I just like, yeah, I haven't done that stuff in 20 years. <laughs> You know, and YouTube is your best friend. There are millions of videos out there. I have my own YouTube channel. If you go to any of the emails that I've sent you in my signature, uh, I have my YouTube link and I have made videos for almost every math lesson that we do. So, you know, you're, he's welcome to look at those. It's also linked into my canvas. Um, but yeah, just go to YouTube. And if you just type in, you know, how to find volume of a prism, 9,000 videos will, will pull up. Okay. Okay. All right, that was the only thing that I had. <laughs> Any other questions? Sweet. Awesome. There's my contact information again. There's a QR code uh, for my Amazon wish list if you're at all curious on the things that teachers desire most in their life. It's very interesting pens and <laughs> guinea pig toys now. <laughs> I do have a question. Yeah. How do you feel it's going with the virtual and are how do you feel do you feel that they are progressing along with the children that are in school? You know, I would love to say absolutely. Um, but to be honest, I it's really hard to gauge. You know, um, looking at test scores and stuff like that, it looks like every it looks like for the most part, our robot friends are doing awesomely. Um, you know, and Marshall especially is great at asking questions and, you know, and self advocating for him for him to be able to make sure that he's understanding what he's doing. Mm -hmm. 
it just comes down to it's like almost like a college class, you know, like it just depends on your learning styles and how you best understand and how you are best at learning. Right. I'm not able to really leave his side and I'm trying to have him be more independent, but he mm -hmm. is a squirrely one, just like my older one. And we have ADHD and he just spins in that chair. And so I have to, and I know part of it is he's staring at a screen. Right. So I have to keep him engaged, but I right. don't feel comfortable walking away, but I'm not obviously doing his work for him, but I have to constantly stay on him, which I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is ever going to end. It's hard. And you know, we, you and I have talked and it's like, you know, there's something to it about like, you know, your mom and he's, he would never act that way here. And I, I, I've never, you know, I've never had Marshall in my class, but I could tell you flat out, he would never, <laughs> you know, but there is that there, you're, everybody's different around their mom. Yeah. Your mom, and you can get away with anything that you want type thing. So, right. Is there yeah. anything that we, that you are encouraging us to do that you would like to see more of that I can offer to him instead of just always harping on him? Is there something that you would like? I think you guys are doing awesome. You guys are doing way better than I am. I, you know, okay. nobody's hit their kid in front of the camera. So like <laughs> <laughs> nobody's like pulling their hair out or like, no, I, I moved away when I pulled my hair. We make sure we hide the bottles of vodka before <laughs> you get on camera. <laughs> no, you guys are doing awesome, and you guys should be super, super proud of yourselves. And I, I don't know how y'all are doing it, because like I said, it's what I, I teach these kids for 180 days, and if they don't like me after the 180 days, I never have to see them again. You guys gotta live with them the rest of your lives. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been, it's a new challenge that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. But like I said, whenever you guys are ready, there's definitely room in here. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll be happy to take them off your hands. <laughs> yeah. I would like for that day. It's not going to be for a while, but we would like for it to be. No stress. And until then we're online and you know, yep. it's not any different. The the face-to-face -face kids do their work the same way they're all, they're all on the computer as well like they're okay. not looking at my face on a computer but all of their assignments are through canvas as well okay i don't touch any paper because i okay. don't want to pass it out i don't want to you know hand it back i don't want to have to hand to worry about any of that so assignments everything is exactly the same okay awesome thank you okay absolutely anything else all right well, it was so great seeing you guys. And you guys have my contact information. If you need anything, please feel free to just throw me a holler. If you want to have a conference and just talk about your child and your child-specific data, um, there's always plenty to, to discuss individually, for sure. OK? All right. Have a grand evening. Thanks. Absolutely. You. You're welcome. <laughs>